consensus. Commissioner uh, Kanye is, is not here as my chair. Um, they volunteer at the chair's meeting. I'll put up the order. Yes, sir. Senior member. Okay, I'll start. You gotta help me along. It's okay. This is part of the reason I'm here. Yep. And you know, Commissioner Seawell and Skinner can also jump in to get their feedback too. We are putting the time. We got set. We need a couple more minutes to set up. Nope. Are we ready to get started? I'm ready whenever you are. Uh, let's get started with uh, this evening's or this afternoon's February 23rd uh, meeting of the Victoria Village Commission. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, a light agenda, but we have some heavy hitters on it this afternoon. So, uh, is there any new business that needs to be taken care of before we start? All right. So, um, just a quick note: the next business meeting is Wednesday, February twenty third at noon in this room. Next hearing is March ninth, um, same time, four p.m. here in this room. We'll start off swearing in staff and then the commissioners can introduce themselves. So hold on, you need to swear me in first and then we'll. Um, okay, uh, so, swearing in staff. Yes, so Kimberly Bernard-Chi, Assistant Historic Preservation Officer. Thank you. And I swear to tell the Oh, I swear to tell the truth. Full truth, or nothing but the truth. I think the full truth is nothing but the truth. I do. If we can have the commissioners, starting with Commissioner Skinner, introduce themselves and we'll just go down the row. Tim Skinner. Commissioner Hissom. Commissioner J. Thomas Seawa. All right, we do not have a public forum today. Um, we do have the approval of the staff approvals, which if we want to go ahead and do the motion, then I'll run through if anybody needs to um, recuse themselves from those. Okay, let's make a motion for the uh, approval of the uh, staff approvals. Motion for the approval. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, they start on page four, and I'm just going to run through them real quickly. Our first one is 743 North High Street, 685 to 689 Hunter Avenue. 982 to 984 Harrison Avenue. Okay, then we have approval of the minutes from the last meeting, the January 12th. A motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We pull up. Staff reports here, and we can start off with application number one, DV 22 02004. This is 685 Avenue. The applicants here can go ahead and sit down and get situated. I'll read the staff report off real quick. So, this application is to remove the existing decking floor and railing, existing garage below, which would remain unaltered. Replace the railing with hardy board cement lap siding with a plank on cement board texture in the corner and a freeze trim with a fur wood texture. Uh, the railing would be four feet four inches high with a six foot front and side side. The new deck flooring would be the timber tack from five fourths inch by six inch composite flooring, pro series, and PCAM. Commissioners at the business meeting noted that the proposed design does not match the style of the building. They suggested that the panels would be more in line with the current design. They are not supportive of the horizontal wood, but are supportive of having an area that has more privacy. The applicant has noted that the proposed railing does match the current garage exterior. HPO staff does want to clarify if the support of the composite decking is due to the decking being on the rear of the property. If it is, if we could just include that in the motion, if there is one for approval. 
I do want to post the question. Does the commission think that railing panels should be similar to those of the garage doors or those of the panels on the front of the structure? And HBO does not support textured boards or that faux wood texture. Staff recommends approval of the application with the condition that the hardy board and timber tech have a smooth finish. Basis for staff recommendation is city code 3116.11, the standards for alterations, specifically 2, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, and 11. Commissioner Hessen, I'll hand it back to you so you can get our applicants sworn in. Okay, can we swear in our applicant? Yes. So if you can state your name for the record, please. Sean Hundley. Do you, do we have to be swear to tell? Yeah, do you have to yeah. swear to tell the truth? Do you have to swear, do you swear to tell the truth? I do. Thank you. All right, and if you have any additional information you'd like to add? So, um, from your notes, it seems that um, I didn't make it clear that what we want to do is it extend the exterior finish of the garage being the lap siding and the corner trim and freeze trim up into the uh, the deck railing or replacing the deck railing. The railing on the front will stay the same height on the side. The homeowners wanted to increase the height up to six foot off of the deck floor to create some of the privacy from uh, between each unit. I think it's more clear on um, the uh, on page two, page three, the section plan, how the lap siding continues above the garage and matches the existing garage with the trim and lap siding. This is based on uh, the homeowners recommended this based on other buildings they have seen in Victorian Village. As a side note, but I, I yeah, that's all that I so. Um, is that all you want to say, or that's all I want to say? Okay, it's interesting because I get where they're coming from, mm -hmm. and we've done this many times when we've had an outside area, and we've done a faux facade. Yeah, to cover that. Problem with this is, is we have an existing sort of horizontal datum yeah. that we're just adding siding onto so it really doesn't look like any type of faux facade it looks like we've just covered the area with um siding sure and which then gives a really weird proportion of that little bump out okay so i don't know what you guys think but you know if I would be okay with this if it had some kind of articulation at the top that kind of looked like some type of finishing piece on that addition. Other than the other than the trim, the freeze board at the top. Yeah. So you'd see some type of cornice at the top that would finish that piece, not like really out of out of this world, but something that says, I mean, a, a building is always composed of bottom middle and top big buildings you see something very fancy yeah uh, regular houses you see gutters and articulation off the roof so something that says ah uh, and i think it will be okay okay let me check this on what are you referring to the, the top of the rail essentially the top of the big wall to the point say sustain I'm talking to the top of the wall. Right. So I would minimize that gutter. I would almost maybe even paint that gutter out so I don't see it. And then I would have some type of white, whatever color you want, reading as the top bonus on that. And I think the other piece to that, the, and I don't know if it's the way that's it's my, I think it's just the way it's reading in the um, perspective rendering is that you don't also don't have that trim piece, which makes that that paraffin seem clunky. But in reality, that's going to continue all the way. See. Yeah, I think Paul's tied tied back together. I, I agree with your statement in terms of it's kind of creating some issues with the way the way it's presented. 
Uh, the other piece I was kind of curious about were the side panels, the need for them to slope the door down. The idea is that if it's a four foot rail or a, a standard height of rail being three, two, that the, you know, the homes are right next to each other and there isn't much privacy between them, but that if it was extended to six foot, that would give each individual deck a sense of isolation from the other. The existing doesn't do that. So Correct. I, I feel like that element seems out of place. I understand the. Uh, you know, what's interesting. Did you uh, did when they came back and they gave comments, did you guys and did you even consider just doing um, the sort of paneled? White paneled look. I hadn't considered that. Because um, quite frankly, I think it, it, if you look in New Albany or any mm -hmm. kind of brick, white brick kind of finishes, um, you either have a railing that you can see through, sure. or you have a paneled railing, which you can't see through. And I would almost guess, and I said it in our last meeting, I would much rather see a paneled with sort of the finished tops that you see. Sure. Without just blanking it out. Mm -hmm. And then I would do the same thing on those dividers, a white panel divider, you know, four panel or something like that, which would really give those outside areas sort of a, a, a an elegant lift. And at the same time, not just be extending that material. And it would be just as cost effective because it, it might even be cheaper than having to do the work to do the siding. Sure. Because uh, with the finished panels, you just have two sides. Sure. With this, I don't even know how you're finishing the inside. Right. Uh, the inside of that. Yeah, there's there's no finish on the inside. It's just attractive framing. It's well done framing with hidden fasteners, and you see the backside to the back. Yeah. The the top trim wraps over, but uh, it's only the exterior in this proposal is finished. Yeah. You guys might look at just panels. Yeah. The, and, the, and I don't know what this condition of your panels are that are, I mean, your posts, they're there now. I mean, if- In need of replacement. They are. Yeah, and the, the framing as well. So, I mean, that's just putting new and doing, you know, I don't know, two, one, two, three, four, four well, five, six, three, three and a half panels with finishes and then do a squared off panel between them. A, a six foot panel between them mm -hmm. and then a four foot in the front. Yeah. Yeah. The six foot just on the inside, you know, unit to unit, not on the outside. No. Uh, you might want to decide that. Yeah. You might just do insides and then leave the outside. So you get a view all the way around and the inside I have my separation between my neighbors. Yeah, so those outside units at the corners would still have kind of that unobstructed view out. Don't have neighbors right adjacent. Okay. You, you just do that privacy screen essentially kind of in the middle section. And I okay. Think, I think that will feel better overall. Okay. Interesting. So if I'm hearing you correctly, we're ascent, we're leaning more towards a rail, an exposed rail, and we're just going to do a six foot panel, really on that middle unit, which has neighbors on either side. Yeah, but not an exposed, uh, an exposed. It's it's a it's a closed panel. Okay. It would just be you know, like you would see in any type of finished plywood, and then a finished piece around it. And maybe a mullion in the middle, and then can we get a picture? Can we get a picture of a close just so they can see that? If you want to try bringing that up. Okay. I think that once you see this, you'll yeah. So 
also a closed panel? Closed panel. Okay. A, a closed finish panel for porch. Wood, I would say wood too. Um, uh, closed panel, uh, closed panel railing for which boy, Google's not very bright today because that looks open to me. No, it knows the what you want, and it's like, and all of the eyes are upon us. I'm not going to try privacy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Or perhaps we could only get a uh, a drawing to the applicant after the meeting. Yeah, I can. Uh, I I do one question. What if um, this is what I wanted to do from the beginning was. Just replace the deck, replace the deck with a timber tech rail. So we're pl replacing what's there, which is all wooden and has the signs of weathering being on the western side of the building. What if it was a full replacement? The homeowners, like many of my clients today, um, are intimidated by wood and the maintenance of wood. And timber tech offers composite materials with 35 or 50 year warranties that have the look of wood. So as as the so an open railing, an open railing. Have we? Have we, we haven't done a railing, but we for the them. city code um, standards for alterations, I suggest replacing a like kind with replacing a like kind. I mean, like with the siding, we've done hardy board, we've done boral, and one of my concerns with the timber tap is that it wouldn't be a smooth finish, which is something we want. Now timber techs, um, the railing. It um, it is a smooth finish, and and as it's replacing as like there there wouldn't be any paneling. It's just the deck with trim boards or skirt boards to cover the fi uh, the framing, and then the railing is just it's as is right now handrail handrail height balusters. Um, you know, in, in early conversations with the the homeowners, I'm thinking. Our best chance of approval is to change as little as possible. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted privacy between one another. So I had submitted one to begin with, which was railing on the front and then panels on the side. They weren't crazy about that look as it you know, could be somewhat hodge podgy. Mm -hmm. um, so that's when I said, and, and that's when they shared the pictures of the lap siding on a build. And we said, okay, well, I, if we're going to go, if we're going to make this drastic change, I want to build what you guys want to build. So we went forward in that direction. Here we are. Um, I understand. I mean, the, I think the only way to really create a, a seamless look with our proposal would be to maybe remove the freeze board and continue up the lap siding through the middle you know, through the top of the garage, essentially, so that there was no, you didn't realize the garage ended you know but if it, that's clear but you know it also when we're talking about that now that i'm looking about that you know that almost means that the lights have to come up i mean the proportion yeah. of that is yeah. all messed yeah. up yeah once, and that's not yeah. ideal for i don't think that's ideal for the clients either because it's a much more intensive job than so let can we i don't know what your timing is on this but can we see that product if he's going to do a replacement and show us what those details would be. Or the, what is the product's name? Oh, Timber Tech Radiance Rail. Uh, you'd have to send it. Okay, could you send it? Yeah. And certainly. so we could take a peek at it and then, you know, I would be willing in these kind of conditions and it's new construction to give it a shot. Product that's going to come up. 
he wanted and we wanted to do. Yeah. Okay. So if you can get that, um, and then do we want to do a shoot it out to us and let us take a look, or how do you want to handle it? So um, I was going to ask Commissioner Seawell if he had any comments, but our options would be to either approve it with conditions or to continue it. And it kind of sounds like maybe continuing it might not be the worst idea. So we can have further discussion. I'm fine and, and sure. if it works with you. But yeah. I mean, I would be willing to look at it and see because that would be the least intrusive. And the the post caps are. I mean, this is a, a perfect example of what the radiance rail was designed to mimic. Okay. Only a composite material. So cool. I can create that drawing and um, submit it by I think next Wednesday is the yes, deadline. Yes, today. Okay. Super. All right. And Commissioner Seawell, uh, uh, no additional comments. I was fine with that. Commissioner Hisson's original proposal is I'm fine with this and just adding a cap if you lack a better description to the top of it. But um, if you'd like to resubmit additional um, documents, I'm fine with that as well. If it works, I think you'll get a better product in the end. And I think the owners will be happier too. Okay, great. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I will make a motion to continue this application. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, and if I and one last thing, if I would do that, I would think of doing more of a, a, a trellis piece on those two, okay. a closed trellis piece, Perfect. and see if they would like the ends open. Okay. And I you. think it'll be really sharp. Okay. Thank you. So we'll move on to application number two, which is BB-22-02-005. This is 23 West second. And I know it is getting a little crowded in here. Just a reminder, if anybody is here who's any on a topic that they haven't already been on the agenda, if you can get any of the speakers list into the before the evidence. This application is means the Pella and Kirkwood stable on the windows for the IVE Dublin instead of the previously approved modern elevate. The change in windows would result in changes to previously approved window opening. Commissioners at the business meeting wanted to know what the changes between the window sizes are. The revised drawings show changes to the windows and door sizes as called out by APO staff and the materials. Which those have been added, that's been updated. Uh, the approved windows list does note that the pellet and Corvio windows are approved for the casement style only. Are these units appropriate for rebuilding? Is something you might want to discuss because that little asterisk is on the approved windows list. Uh, with other supply chain issues, the commission has leaned towards upholding the original proposals um, or items off the approved list. Is this the case that exception should be made? It is another product off the approved list, and if so, why would it want to make that clarification if this does get approved? Staff does recommend approval uh, with the condition that, that the original size buildings be maintained. A basis for recommendation is City Code 3116.12, the standards for new construction, construction, specifically A, B, C, F, A, L, and F. Say that a little bit quicker, those letters. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I was trying to slow down. So I'm teasing. I'm teasing you. <laughs> can, we, can we swear in the applicants, please? Yes. We swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. Yes. Thank you. And if you can quickly get your names for the record. Kriya Iyer. Jessica Sharon Kaufman Development. Steve Walker Kaufman Development. Super. Thank you. Great, thank you, Kim. Appreciate it. So she summarized it really well. Where we're at is we had the Marvin Elevate window, which is on the approved windows list. We estimate everything. You know, we work into removing a sequence of drawings to keep up to to price with our general contractor, our precom partner. And this is one of those scenarios where we're facing supply chain issues. Like I just want to be honest. Um, the Marvin Elevate window is delayed. It has. I haven't checked since we submitted the application, but. Each week was like a growing delay, maybe not day for day, but it was growing significantly. Um, because of that, it's getting harder to get, it's getting more expensive than it was when we originally priced it. So 
what we did is we worked with Priya and we worked with our general contractor, Corna, to find another window that was on the approved windows list and really work it into the design with something that we're all really happy with. Um, and so that's what we're presenting to you today. We really did put an effort to find something on this list. The list isn't super long, so we wanted to make sure we were honoring what is going to fit in with the neighborhood um, and work not to change every single window, but change the windows where it mattered and where it made some some um, some created some new interests as well. So okay. uh, nothing changed at the ground floor. Windows at those, that level remained the same. That was important to us. Um, and I can kick it over to Priya for any technical or design related questions. Yeah, thank you, Jessica. So um, I wanted to clarify, I think when Kim was talking, it's only the windows, there were no changes to any of the doors um, on the project. And we tried to limit the wind which window that we had changes to. Uh, like Jessica said, on the ground floor townhome levels, we have not changed any of the opening sizes there. So the pedestrian experience, we wanted to make sure that we maintain that because I know that that was something uh, important to the commission. Uh, with the supply chain issues, we tried to find a window that met the HPO standards, but um, took it as an opportunity to create some additional visual interest on the upper stories of the building to create um, you know, some, some new elements in the facade. Um, and we also think there's an opportunity to use a window that had uh, a better energy efficient rating. So by code, we're only required to have a U value of 0.32 and a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.28. Uh, the old windows that um, the commission uh, had approved had a U value of 0.31 and a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.29. And we're beating that with these new windows with a U value of 0.27 and a solar heat gain coefficient of 0.30. Uh, so with that, you know, each kind of incremental number is substantial from an energy efficiency standpoint. Um, and that's something that we really want to kind of hone in on as we develop buildings uh, to make sure that there's things that can last in the community and we're making a good impact uh, you know, for the community, but also for the environment. Um, so with that, I think from a, a design standpoint, um, those are kind of the, the main things we wanted to, to highlight. Slide and just my, my own reference, it, which is the and I'm typing up because I was a part of mentioned during the initial approval, but is left the original and right is the proposed so Correct. they're smaller. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. The, the changes in the window openings um, that will occur, they will be reduced. Correct. Correct. The, the sizing is reduced. Is the width is is the width reduced, or it's just the height? Um, in most cases, it's just the height. Yeah. So instead of doing a full panel, and you can see where in most, or you know, I would say at least half the instances, we did try to locate those behind the railing mm -hmm. um, yeah. of the balconies. Right. So there was a lot of intent on where we were placing these, and some we we weren't able to do that, but we did try to make sure that those changes to the windows were in those instances as much as possible. Right. And again, with kind of we kind of limited the ground floor to keeping the same opening sizes uh, to kind of keep that you know grounding pedestrian feel. We've always kind of had, you know, the upper levels have some sort of kind of airiness, um, kind of disappearance. And we think um, actually kind of making some changes in the sizing helps with a little bit of that as well. I, I actually kind of like the gap of separation. It's great. Base up to this level, even though. Sobbing through, I guess, the change of face, but proportions width versus height. Yeah, like you said, it's something we kind of tried to study yeah. um, and be thoughtful about. So there was a lot of time and effort that kind of went into where these things were happening and where the placement was happening. So my only concern is, is because what this is representing is, is 
it's just a height issue. So all of my mullions that I'm seeing is I'll see the window in the mullion. I won't see the mullion on my surface and then see it crack in because of the width of the. You know what I'm saying? Are you asking based on the so the, depth the, of the, the outside the... skin has this infrastructure that we see, which is made of the panel and the window. Correct. But all those horizontals and all those verticals will read just like I'm seeing. Not I won't see. So so if I look at look at this picture, you guys. If I look at this edge here, and I see the first row is of the panel just has horizontal breaks. The second row of panels vertically is a set of windows and panels, and it reads continuously. Not, uh, not panel, 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 window infill, panel, 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 window infill. Right, but the, the thought too with that is that you, while it's being represented in, you know, elevation where some of these panel breaks are happening just from a constructability standpoint, uh, we went through rounds with the BBC previously to make sure that uh, you know, the, the break that we have there is the exact same material as the panel itself. So you're not going to read these hard lines as they're appearing in a construction set of drawings. Uh, when you well, you will, you will with shade and shadow. You'll, you'll see that. And what I'm, I'm interested in is it's not the horizontal breaks. It's those vertical, the vertical pattern that all of that hits. And that those windows aren't going to break that vertical pattern. Mm -hmm. You're going to read into that vertical pattern. So, for example, this window here, if that window reads just like that, mm -hmm. okay, I'm not going to see an inch or two in from that surface. Can you can you show? I don't know yeah. If you yeah. Can, can you? On it or... So can you blow up? Blow up this. Blow up this edge right here. Okay, so when I see this, I'm not going to see it this clearly, but I'm going to be able to read it. Okay, right. I read that. My next one is filled in with two panels of windows. I want to be able to see that line, and I don't want to see this window creep in two inches on either side and two inches up and down like an infill. Correct. It needs to read exactly like it was designed. Right. So what you're telling me is, is the only thing that you guys have done. Originally, that window was down here. Correct. Right. Now it's up here. Correct. Correct. So nothing has changed with the way mm -hmm. this is no. detailed yeah. out. Correct. And how it's going to read. Yeah. yeah. In that way. Yeah. 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 Okay. The vertical it's face of the window, how it create, relates to the vertical side of the paneling has not changed. Okay. Because what we do, whether it's new construction or old construction, I'm going to fill in windows and my wood window is going to read as three inches, not two inches. Mm -hmm. That changes the whole read on the building. Mm -hmm. Yeah, understand. understand. Yeah. So there's been no change in the, the horizontal. Okay. okay. That, that was my only concern. Right. Right. Yeah. Any other concerns? Any other comments? Any other comments? Is there a neck of one? Could we have a motion for application 22-2-005-23 uh, West 2nd Avenue, please? Yeah. Motion for BB-22-02-005-23 West 2nd Avenue as submitted. I second that motion. It's your turn. Yes, so oh, I forget what I'm supposed to say. Oh, yeah. all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank I mean, we do have to vote at some point for a chair and vice chair. So, you know, maybe somebody, somebody just needs a little more practice. Okay, number three is BB 22 02 006. This is 1178 Harrison Avenue. So, this project is to remove the existing half round gutters and replace with a six inch 
aluminum pistyle gutter. The downspouts would also be replaced with a two by three inch rectangular downspout or downspouts and hung by straps or wedges. No wood features would be removed in the process. Commissioners at the business meeting indicated that they were in support of keeping the existing half round style. HPO did let the applicant or did let the commissioners know about the supply chain issues and they requested to know how long it would take to potentially get half round gutters if the information was readily available. The applicant let HPO staff know the half round gutters would be available at the earliest of six months, but it could be up to 12 or 18 months or even later. An email from the contractor noted that they were not sure when the gutters would be available, but they were expecting that the shortage would be through the end of 2022. Commissioners wanted to know if the proposed gutters would be either rectangular or if they would be replaced in like kind with the rounded downspouts. The applicant clarified that the rounded downspouts are not available for the foreseeable future. Uh, HBO staff considers that the gutters character defining features and notes that these are set up for such gutters. Installing the K-style gutters on current leaves would create problems. HBO staff recommends the continuation of the application to allow the applicant to explore some additional repair options. Basis for staff recommendation is City Code 3116, .11, the standards for alteration, specifically one, two, two being the distinguishing characteristics should not be destroyed. The removal or alteration of any historic materials or distinct architectural features should be avoided when possible. Four, five, six, seven, nine, and ten. And hopefully that wasn't quite as fast as the alphabet. Thank you. Um, can I have your name? Could we swear you in, please? Uh, Malin Bryson. Do you swear to tell the truth? I do. Thank you. Comments? Um, I have met with about a half dozen contractors, all of which um, are either no longer working with half round gutters or have told me that they are un, uh, unavailable for the foreseeable future. Uh, I've gotten written comments from two of them. Others won't give me quotes for them. The only quotes I've been able to get so far are for the case aisle. Um, my chief concern is that the current gutters are already showing uh, rot and uh, damage to the, the historical wood features. Um, these gutters were put in in the 90s and haven't been well maintained, uh, which is why they're causing damage to the house. Um, which it, and since I can't replace them currently with half rounds, um, I would like to change them, change the style. So talking to contractors, how about supply houses? I can talk to contractors until I'm blue in the face and they're only gonna carry what they utilize versus going to a supply house that says, this is what we supply, we can supply you half rounds. So I, I find, I mean, I understand the pandemic, I, under, I, I understand shortages, but I can't imagine that we can't, you can't find half rounds somewhere. Uh, I haven't spoken with supply houses. Um, I've just been going with contractors. I don't have the personal know-how to go through those means, unfortunately. Um, even still, if I did find a supply house that had them, I would still need a contract to put them on. And a lot seem unwilling to work with this particular kind of gutter anymore. So, wow. A couple questions. What's, what's the? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Do, do we have resources to add other uh, commissions that? So. We can't recommend specific contractors, but I think the only ones that we might do are like window repair because they're so few and far between. Uh -huh. Typically, when somebody asks about recommendations, I tell them to look through previous minutes. If you know something has come up, you know there might be a contractor that had applied, and they can reach out to them or to talk to neighbors as well. I don't know off the top of my head if any half round repairs have come through recently. But I also haven't been keeping an eye out for them. Well, I would mention too, like a company that does slate roofing. Just to start a supplier that does slate roofing. Yeah. Uh, most of the houses in New Albany, it's copper gutters. And I'm sure if they're making copper gutters, they're making galvanized half rounds. I mean, I just, I can't believe that. Uh, yeah, that I mean, we can't find something like this. It's hasn't been an easy process so far. Uh, we purchased the house in November and like I said, I've been through half a dozen contractors already, and it's only been two months. 
Question, is, is there something wrong with these gutters functionally? So I know you... Uh, the angles are uh, functionally too low, so they're letting water drip out. Uh, some many have gaps between them. Uh, you can see in a lot of pictures there's pinholes, uh, it, and the downspouts are generally rusted. So your purpose in replacing these gutters is to stop... Uh, stop the water from affecting the, the siding and the wood features on the house, as well as protect the foundation. This is uh, the front porch of the house, which has a crack in it because the gutter has separated from the roof and water has been dripping into it. Yeah, I agree with what Commissioner Hissom appears to be alluding to is that um, I, I don't believe you've exhausted your, your option to prove the need that you should go with an alternative product at this point in time. Um, I, I think, as CDP suggests, um, I think a lot more contractors, I'd be surprised that all of the commissions in the city of Columbus would be doing this. Um, highly doubt German Village is going to let anything like that go by, so that may be somewhere to, to check with respect to what's going on down there as well as the Italian village and several others. Um, and then I think if you come back and we truly realize that it is an 18 month process and there's a detrimental feature to this. Um, but at this point in time, I think it's premature to, to change the, the type of gutter. So with looking at contractors, are we also talking about possibly looking at repair contractors or just replacement? I think we look, need to look at both. Okay. Right. Half-brown gutter installation near Dublin, Ohio. Half-brown gutter installation near Columbus, Ohio. Half-brown gutter. So, I mean, there's information out there. I don't know whether you're looking for specifically for contractors or ones that work with half-brown. Yeah, no, I, I am specifically looking for half-browns. Um, and most of the contractors I've had come out, and actually all of them, I didn't even start with a style. They, the, all the contractors have come out, told me they can't do it or they're not willing to do it, um, and then have given me a quote for a case style. I think we need to do, I mean, this rich mark in Ostrander, Ost I, I don't know how to spell that. I mean, they say they specifically do have rounds. Have, have we looked into them? Uh, I haven't contacted that to their contractors. So, I mean, I, I think you need to look at, I think you need to look at people that do specifically do half rounds, not the contractor, but the supplier, and then work backwards on that. I can uh, look into that option. Okay. Any other comments, commissioners? Uh, no. So, do we want to continue this? Yes, I would make a motion to continue VB twenty two dash zero two dash zero zero six. Okay. Is there a motion? Second. We'll make this motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. All right, we will move on to application number four, which is VB-02-007, 1135 North Avenue. And I'm just going to note now, we have at least one speaker, so if I go off the rails a little bit, somebody please catch me. So this application is- That's acceptable. Oh. in. We're freestyling here. <laughs> okay, I'm going to read through this, and then we're going to get the applicant owners form in so they can give their statement and then we do the registered speakers. But this application is a rehearing to construct a two and a half story brick complex. Uh, the commissioners at the business meeting asked if the original unit was one or two separate ones. HBO staff did include the sandboard maps materials as clarification. This was submitted. Um, I read the architect and just it was one unit. 
So there's a 19 L1 and 1822 sample maps, which show that some family home. Uh, since the original structure no longer exists, the applicants are using City Code 3116.12 and standards for new construction, uh, which is, does not constrict them to the same parameters of the original building. The applicant has established that there are new boxes along the avenue and that they are taking their inspiration from certain elements from the historic photograph that they have provided. HPO staff does want to clarify that there are certain situations in which the commission can require a new building to be constructed as it was originally built, but this is not one of those cases as the original structure has not existed in quite a few years. Uh, the applicant added skirting to the front porch to mask the porch concrete, which was a concern that had come up last time. This gives it the look of a wood porch um, found throughout the district, and there are cases that houses have wooden porches and concrete steps. And I will note, since the um, staff report was done, they have also changed the design of that front porch. Staff recommends approval of the application with any clarifications or recommendations made by the commission. Basis for staff recommendation is 3116.12, standards for new construction. A, B, C, E, E, F. I think just all of them. I'm not going to keep reading it though because I think I should address the alphabet. Okay, as well as the Victorian Village guidelines on new construction for what's appropriate and what's not appropriate. And just to note, if anybody else has any speaker slips for 1135 PM, if you can get those up to you while our applicants are getting sworn in, we're going to let them speak first and then we'll call you off. Right? Back to you, Christian Hissen. Okay. Uh, can I have your names and can I swear you in, please? Bradley Blumenscheid, Rhythm Architecture. And Daniel Furl, Rhythm Architecture. Truth and all truth. Nothing but the truth. I do. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, I think Kim summarized uh, what we've done since we've last presented pretty well. Uh, we took a lot of feedback from you guys. Uh, the last hearing we had back in November, as far as the how we were addressing the sun porch, we got rid of the sun porch and put a roof on. Uh, the detailing, uh, the roof uh, configuration, the trim work at the porch base, tying it into the adjacent structures and making it speak the language of the neighborhood a little bit better. All the code sections that Kim listed off were the sections that were the commission referenced back in November. So this is where we've landed. Plus we've been approved for all the variances that were required. For this. Yes. Comments? Speakers. Oh, yeah, speakers. I'm changing things up on you. Okay. All I right. know you are. I, I just have to be difficult. Okay, so I'm going to call off the speakers. Uh, and just a note you have three minutes to speak. And we'll go through everybody before turning it over for Commissioner Cruz. And I'm going to call this off in the order I received them. So, Kathy Reinhardt, you're up first. And um, Commissioner Hassan, you'll swear for the end. Okay. Then once she starts, the timing starts. Can I swear you in, please? Swear yes, to tell the truth? Yes, sir. Thank you. Um, okay, my name is Kathy Reinhardt. I've lived in Victorian Village for 29 years. I do need to make it clear that I'm here as a resident. Not, I don't have my vice president of the Civic Association hat on my head today. I'm here just as a resident. Um, in my 30 years working in residential rental business. I've managed many properties on the avenue. Um, 949, 772, 1316, all that have been in older buildings, but there are a lot on the avenue as well that are newer and much uglier than what's being proposed here. Um, and I also don't feel that this would, that this project would impact negatively on the rental density of the land. I'm here today to support the project as a landlord and a property manager for 30 years in the short north and beyond. Plus, I have known the owner, Mike Navarro, for 10 plus years. And in doing business with him in the past, I can tell you that I have full confidence that he will manage this property very well and take care of it. He and his family live in Italian Village. They are members of the community and invested in the community. 
Um, the house that they live in right now was built by them and approved an Italian bill. So they own 12 units now in the community. And another thing I want to point out is there are zero complaints either on social media or in 311. I looked it up. So they are here to be hands on managers of this project. Thank you. Thank you. Any other speakers? Yes. Next, we have Brooks Williams. Hi, Principal, are you in? Hey, Brooks Williams. I uh, swear to tell the truth. Yes, sir. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Brooks Williams. I've been a Victorian resident, Victorian Village resident now for over five years. I love this area so much that I sold my condo in the Burgos and moved down here. I have walked by this land so many times over the past few years and wondered why there's nothing been developed on it with my dog. It's just a vacant lot in the middle of other two beautiful homes. I wonder what was going on. I have been watching the plans over the past few months, and I've seen the plans. I think it's a beautiful home, and it's great to have a home in the area and not another apartment complex because all over our area now is full of brand new apartment complex. So I think it would be great to have a new home here. I could figure out what was going on with it. So I look forward. I look, at the, I look at the current plan, I look forward to seeing them. Hopefully this building come up here soon and not vacant a lot or a permanent building in the area. Thank you. Beautiful, thank you. Do you guys have any comments? No, we go through the speakers. We have more speakers? Yeah, we have one more speaker. Oh, okay, I thought we only had two. No, so our last one is um, Vince Capel. For any other speakers, will you, because I'm new to this, will you please read out how many we have so I know? Um, I'll let you know. Like three, next. four, whatever it is. Thank you. Hello, my name is Beans and Cacao. Can you swear? Yeah. Yes. Can we, you swear to tell the truth? <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you for walking me through that. I appreciate it. <laughs> This is you, hey, you know, our, hey, you know, we're looking for commissioners, so if you're in Well, I have to follow protocol. So. Okay, there you go. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Again, my name is Bisa Patel, and I'm here in support of this new build. I moved here from OTR Cincinnati about a year ago and saw the growth in my area with city officials and builders working in unison to develop my neighborhood in order to better attract more diversity and ignite a fresh start for homeowners. So much so that I decided to invest in condominium in the area myself. I can tell you from being here and observing all the BBC meeting minutes and all the other commercial and residential new builds, this is by far the most scrutinized project to go before any city officials on this scale. We are all about density in our area since there is going to be an influx of new boomers, empty nesters, and out of towners due to manufacturers developing in and around Columbus such as Intel and Hyperion. I've looked at the meeting minutes and what the historic preservation has been advocating, and this should have been approved in the last meeting with some small changes that HBO and staff approve later. I'm uncertain as to what they're going to do with these new builds, but if they're up to scale, I'm certain they will lead to greater growth and investment in this area. I've been an advocate for OTR, and now I'm going to be an advocate for this village. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, we're done. Do you guys have any comments? Um, I just want to say a couple things. Um, I just want to say one, I'm glad we've been through this many meetings because I think now you really do have something solid. I think you've addressed neighborhood concerns, the sun porch, a lot of the things. And I truly believe that this will be an asset to the neighborhood. So thanks for working with us. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Any other comments? My only comment, uh, and again, I echo the appreciation for the, the hard work to, to evolve and, and listen along the way. Hasn't been easy. Yeah, right. Um, my only question would be in terms of the materials, site plan, all that, and, you know, being a resubmission, if that still needs to come 
through separately. Um, I, I guess the question would be, or is that going to be for what you had submitted originally? Is that changing at all? And if it is, I think it may just be just getting that resubmitted as part of this package for approval. Can I answer? Yes. Uh, yeah. The goal is to keep the approved landscaping, approved site plan as exists. The footprint of the porch has not changed. Just the detail here. So. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Seawell, do you have any comments? Um. <laughs> Well, as we uh, celebrate the one year anniversary of first seeing you all to the week, um, I, I agree with Commissioner Hissom's comments is that I believe this finished product is, although it's been frustrating for many parties along the way, uh, uh, this truly is significantly better than, than what was originally proposed. And, and I think we truly have met a balance with respect to what you all have trying to achieve as well as what the community and balancing that act. And so um, I, I, I think this is a, a great product and I, I look forward to um, similarly to Brooks. I walk my dog past this uh, <laughs> pretty frequently as well. So um, I, I'd like to commend you all, the applicants, as well as the staff for the, the business meetings and everything else that goes on behind the scenes to eventually get us to this point in addition to the commissioners. So um, those are my comments and I actually will happily move a motion to uh, approve this application as submitted. Thank you. Is there a second? Uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Thank, thank you. you, guys. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Next one is number five, which is application BV-92-007. This is 989 High Street, and as a reminder, if anybody has not turned in their speaker slips, if you can please do so, yeah, do so, uh, do that now before uh, we start calling up to things. The later it gets, the like the more I trip over my words. It's okay. We're gonna get through this, and I do good job. It's gonna be great. Right. Can I have your name and could I swear you in, please? Yeah, okay. Dustin Todd with Arch Hall Architects. And if you swear to tell the truth. I do. Thank you. All right. So this application is to paint the previously painted brick store front front the Sherwin Williams kind green and paint the handsome window so the Sherwin Williams arena door solar. Install two uh, nano walls to replace the existing storefronts. Enclose the rear patio with a six foot tall horizontal work privacy fence. The fence is to be painted with Sherwin Williams iron ore. Uh, the planters are also there to screen the interior and exterior of the fence, and this includes new trees and uh, planters and a living wall in that patio area. A mural is to be installed inside the patio. A final location in design is to be determined and install a new wooden trellis over a section of the rear patio. Commissioners at the business meeting noted that the proposed colors were to be bright for Victorian Village. On the uh, south that faces North High Street. Uh, they also noted the rendering and the paint swatches were a little off. They requested a side by side comparison of the before and after for the facade, which HPO staff have put together and has had to its materials. And residents had previously expressed concern regarding the noise. Staff want to propose with any prudent to exclude exterior speakers on the new patio. And are all of the rear patio elements appropriate? Um, upon further review, HBO staff did notice that the rear patio renderings and the site plans had a bit of a discrepancy with how the east door windows are shown. There's some recession that doesn't show up in the uh, elevation renderings. But it, it looks a little bit uh, weird, like there should be something recessed, but there's not. Um, HBO does not support the infill of historic openings on the east and south wall. Drawings of these areas showing the current and proposed conditions would be needed for final approval. There's also a slight discrepancy on the current front window. Um, how does the nano wall uh, terminate on the southmost storefront by that door? Staff recommends continuation of the application to allow for the applicant to confirm that the additional seating does not require any additional. 
parking, and make sure that's okay with zoning and for the school measured elevation drops to be submitted for the proposed route changes. Basis for staff recommendation is City Code 3116.11, the standard for alteration. Specifically, 1, 2, 4, 5, 6, 9, 10, 11, and 12, and the deploying village guidelines for new constructions, stating what is appropriate, what is not appropriate, as well as the short north design guidelines uh, for commercial patios and outdoor design, outdoor dining. And just to highlight some of these real quick, stating the outdoor spaces should not create a visual or physical obstruction or hazard to adjacent buildings, street skate elements, pedestrian travel or thoroughfare, and the spaces should be designed in a manner to minimize negative offsite impacts of light and noise. Okay, Commissioner Hissel, now you've already sworn the applicant. We'll hand it over to you um, to fill it in any additional speaking points, and then we'll call it in. Um, call up our speakers and I have to count them before. Okay. So. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly, and thank you, Commission. Um, we we heard the commission's comments at our conceptual review and you know took each comment and we believe we addressed each of them uh, in turn with the nano wall windows on the front to keep the storefront look uh, along High Street um, and you know, design of the patio um, regarding the, the colors on the front. We're we're happy to uh, adjust the colors to be a more muted look. Um, and you know, we we'd be interested if if the commission is in favor whether we could work with with staff to adjust those colors or not. Um, you know, overall, um, regarding some of the the concerns we heard at the conceptual review uh, from neighbors with. The rear patio, we wanted to reassure that there will not be speakers on the rear patio and that this concept is uh, a food focused concept. It is different from my clients, other establishments around the city. Um, the uh, aside from that, um, it, it, it was clear from neighbor comments about uh, that a concept of this type in this location would be would be fought. Um, we, we have reviewed zoning calculations for the patio in the back and the inside of the space, and it does meet the requirements from what was submitted with the shell uh, building improvements previously. Um, and uh, this, this type of use is allowed under the commercial zoning code in this area. Um, aside from that, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions that the commission has. We have six speakers. Six speakers. Yes, and just to be note, since we do have a large number of speakers, if there's multiple people with the same numbers of concerns or if those concerns are overlapping, um, if you want to coordinate uh, the number of speaking speakers on the particular topic, you can do that. And if somebody's already uh, stated everything that you had planned on bringing up, you can also just stand up very quickly and say that you agree with previous statements. But the first one, I'm just going to do this in order of submitted, is Eric. Uh, Giulio, and I've got to apologize. I'm not great with the pronunciation of Italian names either. That's pretty good. So, okay. Giulio. <clears throat> uh, can I swear you in here? Yes. You swear to tell the truth? I do. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Eric Giulio of 19 West Star Ave, and this property sits within arm's reach of mine. As such, my century owned townhome town is well within the 125 foot range. Defined as a quote, agreed third party in the city's historic preservation code. I won't repeat my testimony from December, but I will ask the commission to revisit the points so I'll share copies with you tonight. Instead, I'll focus on pertinent city code and the players involved here. I also have a petition signed by 74 people in opposition of this plan, many with their own expressed concerns, which I will also share. These signatures include all nine town homeowners in our association. Section 3116.11 states, every reasonable effort shall be made to use the property for its originally intended purpose. These are residential spaces we're talking about converting to business use in the back of the building. And we have bedrooms that basically sit atop this proposed patio. Section 3119.01 states, redevelopment should be, quote, benefiting property owners and residents. 
and the daily and nightly disturbances of business use at this location is clearly in detriment to our quality of life as residents and financially as property owners. It never crossed my mind in all my years living here that these ground floor apartments and their patio could be converted to business use. I love my home, but I had no idea this was possible. And had I known, I would not have purchased it. And I'm sure I'm not alone in that. Section 3119.05 states, the commission's duty is to quote, preserve, protect, and enhance this historic neighborhood. And this proposal does none of those things. Finally, I'll point out that it speaks volumes that our association has yet to hear from anyone at this property or the sponsors of this proposal, despite our public and private requests. And I think we know the reason why. They simply do not care about us. And they do not care about this neighborhood beyond its potential to maximize their profits. None of that bodes well for how we will fare if they are approved to proceed. But we need only look at our experience with this owners and other nearby bar for the answer to that. And to be clear, I'm not suggesting another owner or business use would be suitable here, but it is my unequivocal position that the rear residential side of this building is wholly incompatible with any business use. So I urge the commission to act in the best interest of the public welfare and deny this proposal as inappropriate, detrimental to us as residents and owners, and out of step with your mission. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we'll only check stuff from yeah, sure. Thanks. Yes, I'll ultimately have the distance as well for the record. All right. Uh, and our, our next speaker is Kathy Bernhardt. Thanks for everyone. Not to increase the recording, but let's give the uh, convenience a chance. Okay. Well, Are you in again? Do we have to swear? Yeah, he's already sworn. Well, I echo and agree with everything the first speaker said. I live just across Second Avenue from where this patio will be. I already have enough problems with the White Castle fans. I can't sleep with my door, my windows open. And any kind of more public use back in that area will be a disturbance to everyone around us even across the street from where that's going to be. The only other point I would like to bring up is that when these things are approved, no dialing it back. So when projects like this get approved and noise issues happen and bar noise happens, it's very hard for the residents to um, have any way to change it once it's already done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Next speaker. Next speaker is uh, Cheryl Pantella. Hi. Cheryl, can I uh, swear you in, please? Swear to tell the truth. Thank you. Thank you. And I lived in Victoria Village for over 20 years. Um, I'm representing the residents of the Dakota at, at 845 North High Street. I'm on board there, and um, we have considerable concern about the increase in violence, the increase in bars. All, many, many, many studies will suggest that there is a correlation between bars and late hours and increased crime. Bring those statistics to you. Um, there was a study by the Short North Alliance called Market Study. They had identified that we have an ample amount of bar space, and experts recommended that we do a better job of balancing that with consumer goods, retail, and other sorts of supportive uses that are important to residents and community. 
There are over 50 late night operations in the short north now. And the fat last five years, bars have increased 212% in the short north. 212%. Many of the original residents, meanwhile, a lot of people have left the short north because they are concerned about the noise and the crime. Um, and so we are opposing this. And actually, we would like to see some sort of moratorium on bars in the short north until there's the adequate study done of what is in the best interest of our community and how we can balance the needs of residents and businesses. I will also note there's a lot of businesses and merchants and hotels who and, and developers who oppose this as well because the residents have found it to be noisy. I mean, I'm just concerned that this is going to turn into what happened to the flats in the 90s and you're going to destroy the